Hi friends, it's Elizabeth from Echo with Signs and Stories. How are you today? I'm so glad you're here with me. Help me sing my welcome song. Are you ready? Hello to everyone, and how are you today? We've come to our science, time to laugh and sing and play. And when you're up, you're up, put your hands way up high. And when you're down, you're down, put them way down low. And when you're only halfway up, you're neither up nor down. So roll your hands as slow as they'll go. And then roll your hands as fast as they'll go. Give your hands a clap, 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 and lay them in your lap, lap, lap. Thank you for helping me with that. I have my science bag today, like I do every day. Look at it today. It's really full. Oh my goodness. Can you help me investigate? If we're going to work like scientists today, we're going to have to use all of our senses. Do you remember, remember what your senses are? We'll use our eyes to see and our ears to hear our nose to smell, and our mouth to taste, and then we'll use our fingers to touch, and then we'll learn so much. Are you ready to investigate with all of your senses? All right, use those eyes. We'll start there. Look at this. The bag is full, and you can see the shape. It's kind of, kind of tight against the edges of the bag. Can you tell what shape this is? on that end, and what shape it is along this end. Yeah. And then we'll use our ears. I'm going to shake it. Listen close. It's rattly. It sounds like there's some loose parts in there. I'm going to knock on it with my hand. Let's see if it sounds hard or soft, like a pillow or something in between. Use your ears. I'm going to wrap. Is that a soft sound? Or is it a hard sound? Yeah, that's a hard sound. It's this hard. It's big as my science bag. It's hard. It sounds rattly like there's loose parts. I'm going to give it a sniff. Hmm. I smell something, but I'm not really sure what that is. Maybe when we pull it out, we'll be able to better tell what that smell is that I'm smelling. Hmm, not sure. Should I taste it? No, I won't taste it. All right, you used your senses. You know how big it is. You know it sounds hard. You know there's some loose parts in there. We heard that. What do you think's in the bag? Do you have a prediction of what I'm going to pull out? What's your best guess? Say it out loud. All right, let's pull it out. You ready? One, two, three. What is that? Do you recognize this thing? What's rattly must be inside. I see a latch. I can open it and we could peek inside. You can make another prediction. What do you think is inside? This is a box. It has a handle. What kind of box is it? What's inside the box? Before we open it, I want to do some research about things that could be in a box like this. Let's see. My research book today is called A Good Day's Fishing. Does that give you a hint? as to what might be inside of our box. Let's take a look. A Good Day's Fishing by James Prosek. It starts like this. This is my tackle box. Have you ever heard of a tackle box? What kinds of things does a tackle box hold? This is my tackle box. What I need for a good day's fishing is in here somewhere. It 
It's not this. This is a spinner. It spins around and attracts fish's attention. I used it to catch a yellow perch. And this is a Phoebe spoon. It flashes in the water. I caught a pumpkin seed sunfish on it in old Farmer Catchell's pond. I hooked a crappy too, but it got away. This is just some line. I'll get to that sometime. These are my bobbers and swivels to make things float. These are my sinkers to make things go down. I use bobbers and sinkers to catch carp. And here are my hooks. Aren't they cool? Here's an old sandwich. What was I looking for again? This is an eel. How did he get in here? Here's my fly rod and fly reel and my rubber fish lure. I never get anything on that. If I dig deeper, maybe I'll find it. Well, at least I have my plugs. I use them to catch largemouth bass. And these are my flies, tied from furs and feathers. They're for catching my favorite fish. Brook trout. What I really need isn't my wrench or my tape measure or my lucky lure. It's my hat. The end. So we learned that a box like this could be a tackle box. And if it's a tackle box, what would be inside here? Some things for a day of fishing. Let's open it up and find out. Oh. Yeah, I thought there was going to be tools in here. Turns out that these are tools to use while you're fishing. Do you remember this from the book? Do you remember what that was called? A bobber? It floats. This is a bobber too. It also floats. What else is in here? Oh, do you remember? What he called something that looked like that. Or this. I think he called them plugs. They were good for catching big fish. And then how about something that looks like this? Kind of flashes in the water to attract fish's attention. Is that a spinner? Or something like this, a spoon. That would be flashy underwater. These are really interesting things that are in this box. You have to be careful when you go into a fishing box though, because there's lots of hooks. Remember the hooks that he showed on the page? They're very cool, but they're also sharp. I put little protectors on the ends of these hooks so it would be okay to touch them. 
but usually the protectors aren't on there. So you have to be extra careful when you look inside a tackle box. What did he need for a good day's fishing? Have we found it? Should I look under here? There's another compartment, another space under this space. What are we looking for? I'm hoping there's not an eel. <laughs> oh, a hat. That's what he needed for a good day's fishing was his hat. If I put it on. <laughs> now I'm ready to go fishing. I can't go fishing outside today. So I was thinking maybe I would try fishing inside. Have you ever tried to go fishing inside? I made a fishing pole out of a stick that I found in the yard and a piece of string tied it onto my stick. And then I made some fish too. I made a one fish, a two fish, a three fish, all the way up to 10. I made 10 fish out of paper and I put a little paper clip on the end of the fish. Why do you think I put the paper clip there? I put it there because I also have at my house some magnets. Have you ever used a magnet? This is called a magnet wand. The magnet's right inside here. Magnets are really good at attracting metal. And the paper clip is made out of metal. Metal will stick to a magnet. Some kinds of metal. And the paper clip will. I also had a magnet that looked like this at my house. Do you think it will attract or stick to the paper clip too? Yeah, it does. Magnets will stick to paper clips. I found a magnet on my refrigerator that looked like this. You put it on your refrigerator and it sticks to the refrigerator because the refrigerator ha has the right kind of metal on it. And then you can put little notes or pictures in your clip. Sometimes you can find a magnet on refrigerators. So this one I tied to the end of my fishing pole and I'm gonna use it to fish for my paper fish. I made a river. Do you see what I used for my river? I have a yoga mat that I'm gonna pretend is my river. And I'm gonna put my paper fish, one through 10, onto or into the river. Can you count with me? One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten little fish in my river. I'm going to try and catch them all. I have a bucket. I'm going to put my fish in my bucket as I catch them. Which one should I catch first? Number one. All right, I'm gonna try. It's not easy. It's hard to make the magnet go right where you want it to go. I feel like I wanna use my fingers to put the magnet onto, put the fish onto the magnet. But I'm gonna keep trying it's okay if you don't do it the first time. It's okay if you can't do it the very first time you try. You have to stick with it. It's not that you can't do it. You just can't do it yet. Don't give up. Keep trying until the magnet, I'm almost there, catches the fish. I did it. Fish number one is going into my bucket. I'm going to try for fish number two. And then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, until I get all ten of my fish. 
Yay, into my bucket. You can try this at home too. Cut some fish out of different colors of paper. Put a paper clip on the end and find a magnet to put on the end of a string. Tie your string onto a stick. Put your fish into the river. That might be a yoga mat or a towel or your carpet and see how many you can catch. You might try and catch all the blue ones or one through 10. I caught a blue fish, number eight. In my bucket he goes, give it a try. I also wanna do some fishy art today. Here are the fish for my art project. Can you tell what I use to cut these fish out of? It feels bumpy. It's bubble wrap. The package came in the mail and it was wrapped in bubble wrap. And so I cut little fish shapes. This one is round like a pancake. The sunfish in the story was this shape. This one's longer and more narrow, like a torpedo. The brown trout was this shape. Which one do you think moves faster through the water? The round pancake fish? Or the long, narrow, torpedo-shaped fish? Yeah, the torpedo fish is the faster fish. You can tell a lot about a fish just by looking at its shape. I'm going to use this one for my art project. It's the shape of the brown trout. I have some paint. I have some brown and yellow, a little bit of blue, and some red. I remember in the story that the brown trout definitely had some brown. So I'll start there. Put some brown paint on my brown trout. Painting my bubble wrap. <laughs> There's also some yellow on the brown trout. So I'm gonna add some yellow. He had yellow on his fins. He had some yellow dots all down his body, too. Something else I noticed about the brown trout is that he had red dots. Did you see those? Such a beautiful fish. Not only did he have round, red dots, but around the red dots, there was blue. So beautiful. I'm going to add some blue. <laughs> a little bit more blue here, a little bit more blue there. Maybe I'll give him a blue eye too. Now that I've painted my bubble wrap, I'm going to put it paint side down on my piece of paper and press down like that. So when I pull it up, there'll still be paint on my bubble wrap, but where else will there be paint? Let's find out. There's paint on my paper. It's like a fish print. I'm going to paint my bubble wrap again and put even more paint on it and put another brown trout over top of this one. Do you have some bubble wrap at home? Look in the boxes where packages have been delivered to the house if you have any. You might find some bubble wrap. Let's see if you can find some paint and make some bubble wrap fish prints of your own. Give it a try. 
Thanks for being with me today, friends. I'll see you next time. Thank you.